All right, guys, on behalf of Aoki Foundation, welcome to Neon Future Science. Today, we have Dr. Matthew Johnson from John Hopkins University, and we're going to dive into psychedelics. Whoa, cool. He's been working in the field for over 16 years and is one of the most published doctors in the use of psychedelics for brain health. So Matt, let's just get started on some basics here. So what are the benefits of psychedelics for the brain? Well, we're, we're still figuring out the whole story, but we know a good number of things. They can help people overcome addictive disorders. They can help people overcome depression. Probably the most dramatic example of that are the studies that looked at depression and anxiety in cancer patients, some of which were terminal, and showed remarkably robust reductions in depression. When they think of psychedelics, you think of an acid tab. It's not like you're gonna give someone an acid tab and be like, let's see what happens, right? Like, what does that look like in research? If someone chooses to do drugs of any type, know <laughs> your source, know exactly what you're doing, how much yeah. you're doing, right? Uh, yeah. We use the active compound that's in mushrooms, psilocybin, it's a white powder. So it's put into a pill, but it's, again, it's the same thing in the mushrooms, but it's not the mushroom itself you're probably gonna be able to see a therapist in a few years, go to a clinic. People have to be prepared for the experience. They have yeah. to work with therapists that they get to know. They're not with strangers during the experience. That helps to reduce the chances of the so-called bad trip. In two, three, four, five years, we're probably gonna see multiple psychedelics approved as treatments by the FDA. So probably first out of the gate is gonna be MDMA for PTSD. Yeah. And then probably a year or two behind it, psilocybin for treating depression, perhaps for uh, addictions. I'll put it this way, even if some of these studies ended up showing half of the effect, that would still be better than anything out there. I mean, that's like how profound some of these effects are. There are stories, and I've done research on this, right? Like stories of people saying they just took it to party and they're like, oh my God, they just you know, quit drinking. It's amazing that it, that happens ever. If someone's just looking to party and they have one of these epiphanies, it's life-changing experiences. That's not the norm. But we increase that likelihood that this is gonna be one of the most meaningful experiences in your life. Something I've been interested in is professional athletes who have sustained injuries through head impact over the years. And there's a lot of reports of folks saying they did psychedelics and not just help with their mood and help them move away from addictive use of substances, but also they're remembering things better. The question is, is this worthy of investigation? And I think yeah. absolutely. What's the other side? What's the risks? And like, how do you do it safely? Who have disorders like schizophrenia or bipolar disorder, a psychedelic can make their disease worse. The other thing is anyone can have a bad trip. The really dangerous thing is if you go do something stupid. It is really rare. Every once in a while, people get into accidents. People are gonna fall from heights. They're gonna wander into traffic. So I guess the safest way about it is being in a controlled environment, right? Yeah, and probably the biggest part of that is having that therapeutic relationship like a therapist. We need to process what you went through and treat it seriously, not just to say, oh, you took a drug, shame on you. It, it just seems completely logical that this is great for creatives. What's your take on that? It seems obvious they do. Beatles before and after LSD. Lucy in the Sky of Diamonds, they had to be tripping during that. And I want to hold your hand, 100% not tripping. <laughs> you know, I was like, you think of like Jimi Hendrix's performances and he's just playing with his mouth on the guitar and he's just in that zone. I could also imagine someone taking psychedelics before their their studio trip and then just making some like jargle. It just, yeah. blah, 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 you know. <laughs> One of the exciting things about psychedelic is that it really is getting at the, at the psychological roots of these disorders, I believe, not just treating the symptoms. It's not like the drug is lasting in their system. It's more the medication has facilitated this intense psychotherapeutic process. What they learn is more like the, the growth you have if you go to psychotherapy, or I would say more generally, just life, like your first time living in another culture or falling in love. It's more like that. 
what this looks like in the future because I feel like it's it seems that it's going to be on a similar trajectory of marijuana and the, the road to legalization of marijuana. It's very, very likely that few of these psychedelics are going to be approved as medicines within a few years. Once people see their grandma go to psilocybin therapy and for stuff and see, oh, wow, it really helped her. I think it's that that's going to really turn the tide. I'm hoping that psychedelics, if we're careful, if we do our homework, but if we appreciate their potential, they could be a bridge into a neon future. Thank you.